two and a half hours. That's how much time it took me to build this automation in an A10, which I later sold for $750. By now, it should be clear that making a 300 node AI workflow means absolutely nothing to a business. But identifying and solving a specific problem is how you actually create value. So today I'll show you how to make an AI voice agent that can take calls, book appointments and notify your entire team. Also, you can find all the resources used in the video inside my free school community linked in the description. So here's the automation we're going to be building today and it's an AI voice agent for our restaurant. Look at it this way, if we can come in and install an AI that automatically calls and books the customers instead of actual staff members having to do that, how much time and money can that save that restaurant per week? Basically we're providing so much value that it essentially becomes a no-brainer offer. But let's actually see how it works. We're going to make this voice agent using Vapi AI and I'm just going to test it now to kind of show you how it works. I'll just click on talk to assistant. Hello, this is Chef's Kitchen. How can I help you today? I'd like to make a reservation. Great, may I have the name for the reservation, please? Alex. Thank you, Alex. How many guests will be joining you? Just me. Thanks, Alex. What date and time would you like to book your table? Please provide the exact date and time. Let's do tomorrow, October 20th, 2025 at noon. The table is available on October 20th, 2025 at 12 p.m. Do you have any allergies we should be aware of? No allergies. Any special requests like seating preferences? Yeah, I'd like to sit outside. To confirm, I have a reservation for Alex on October 20th, 2025, 12 p.m. Allergies, none, special request, outside seating. Is that correct? Yeah. Your reservation for one person, Alex, on October 20th, 2025 at 12 p.m. with outside seating is confirmed. We look forward to welcoming you at Chef's Kitchen. All right, bye. Goodbye, have a great day and see you soon at Chef's Kitchen. Okay, now if I go to my Google Calendar on October 20th, we can see that we have a new table reservation for Alex at exactly 12 p.m., which means that the agent successfully booked us in the calendar. Also, all this information got stored in a database, which in this case is a Google Sheet. And lastly, it also sent a new email to the staff members. In this case, it's just sending it to me, but we can still see how professional this looks with all the data about the reservation. This way, even non-technical people can easily know everything about the guest that is coming. Okay, it's time to actually build this agent out. So we will start in Vapi by first simply signing up. Then we will click on assistance and create a new assistant. Let's give it a name. And once you created it, you will see all these features like voice, transcription, tools, and so on, which you can all play around with however much you want. But the first thing we'll need to configure is the system prompt for this agent. And to help you guys save time, I've already put the system prompt as well as all the other resources inside this Google document, which you can find in my free school community and simply copy it and bring it over here. Then you just want to publish this agent. Also, you can change the first message to whatever you want. So I will just say, hello, this is Burger King. How can I help you today? Okay, now let's actually make this agent come to life by connecting it with an A10. And we're going to do that by giving it some tools. So you'll want to click create tool and select custom tool. We're going to name this tool check availability. Make sure it's spelled exactly like this with the second word starting with a capital letter. You can leave the description blank, but we will need to add some parameters. And the quickest way to do this is clicking on visual editor and come back to the Google document where you will find this JSON, which you can simply copy and bring into WAPI and then hit apply. Lastly, let's just click save. So back in A10, we actually have three separate workflows over here, which means that we will give our agent in WAPI three different tools. So now I'll show you how to set up this first workflow. So this is our check availability workflow, which is going to search for all the available times in our Google Calendar. It starts off with a webhook trigger set to a post request with the respond method being set to using respond to webhook node. Here, the first thing you want to do is switch this to a production URL and copy it and head over back to Vapi where we will find this server URL and paste it in. Basically, this is how we will connect our NA10 workflow with our agent in Vapi. Then we have a get many events Google Calendar node where after you set up your credentials and selected the calendar you want you'll need to configure these before and after parameters for the after just scroll down until you see this initial search date time parameter and drag and drop it in which basically sets when to start an event in google calendar and since normally you'd be at a restaurant for about one to two hours i just went into claude and said to make me an expression that adds two hours to this expression you can also find this in the free google document 
And once this Google Calendar node executes, it will either output something like this or no data at all. So basically, if an event in our Google Calendar doesn't exist, like for example, at 3 p.m., back in NA10, we would get no output data, basically something like this. And because of that, you wanna go to settings and select always output data. That way, if we execute it, we get some data back. Then we have an if node to check if the data exists. Basically, if there is no output data, that means the time is free and available in our Google Calendar. So we can send off that data right away to our Wappy agent, letting him know that we have an available time. And to do this, we use our respond to webhook node and the response method is set to JSON. But Wappy accepts only a specific JSON format, which you can find in the Wappy docs page. So once you're in the documentation page, you wanna click on tools and select custom tools. Then scroll down until you see this server response format. You want to copy that and paste it into NA10, where you will find this tool call ID back inside the webhook node. Scroll down to tool calls and here we can see the ID, which we will simply drag and drop in here. And for the result, I simply stringify this expression, which made it come out like this, with available being true, which just means that we have an available time. Okay, so that we use when we have an available time. But what if somebody already has a booking at the exact same time? Then the items would come out this true branch. After which we would use an aggregate node to combine however many items come from here into a single list. Then we use some complicated code node logic to calculate all the other available times in our Google Calendar. And then another code node to calculate the closest available slot to the one our client wanted. So let's say our reservation at 12 p.m. was already taken, then our closest available time would be 11 a.m. Which we then send off back to our WAPI agent in the same exact way we did over here by giving it the tool call ID and the closest available time. That way our WAPI agent can automatically recommend them our second best available time. So now let's give our agent the ability to actually book reservations. So again we're going to head over to tools and create a new custom tool. This one we're going to name book reservations. Make sure the second word starts with a capital letter. And now again we'll need to set some parameters using visual editor. So I'll head back to my Google document and copy this JSON an object, paste it in and hit apply and save. Now here we have our workflow in an A10 and of course the first thing we need to do is switch this to a production URL and copy it, then bring it back to the server URL inside Wappy and save. Okay it starts off with another webhook node set up exactly like the previous one and then we have this code node which will basically find and extract the user's name from the call. So if I hit execute step you will see that we get username Alex which is from the Call. Then we have a create an event Google Calendar node where again we will need to configure the start and end time. For the start time you will find it inside the webhook node set as confirmed reservation date time. So just drag and drop it in. And for the end time again it's the same expression we had in our previous workflow basically just adding two hours to the start time. Now lastly we'll just want to add a field called summary and name it something like table reservation for then drag and drop the username. So in this case, it would say table reservation for Alex. And so that's how our actual event would be called. Then the last thing you'll need to set is another respond to webhook node using JSON, of course, in the exact same format Wappy wants us to send and find the tool call ID inside the webhook, drag and drop it in. For the result, just type reservation booked. So our agent knows that the reservation got booked successfully. So now we just need to add one more tool that logs all the bookings and notifies the staff. So again in Wappy click create new custom tool. Let's name this one log reservation and again we'll need to add some parameters. Head back to my Google Sheet and copy this. Okay let me click apply and save. So this is our final workflow in an A10 and again we have a webhook trigger from which we need to grab a production URL. Head back to Wappy and paste it inside and then save it. Okay so our webhook trigger is configured exactly the same as our previous two so not much to say here and then we have a code node called get conversation details so it will basically extract only the conversation we had with our agent on the call so let me show you what I mean we get the entire conversation between the agent and the user after we have this information extractor AI node which will basically get only the things we need from this entire conversation so for the text I put in the raw messages and then set to extract the reservation name, the guest number,
number, reservation date, time, allergies, and special requests. So all the important data we need. And our output would look nice and clean, something like this. Then I'm just using a Google Sheet node to append all the data inside the right rows. So just drag and dropping those values inside. Lastly, we're again sending off the data using a respond to webhook node back to our agent in the exact format that we expect. So for the tool call ID, drag and drop the ID. And for the result, I just typed reservation store. The last thing we need to do is notify the staff about the reservation while also sending that data in a super clean way, just like this. So we will use a HTML node selecting generate HTML template. You'll also find the exact HTML in the Google document, but basically down here, you'll just need to drag and drop the right fields in. So for the name, drag and drop the reservation name for the guests, the number of guests and so on. And you should get something like this super clean and looking great. Then just add a send a message Gmail node here, set the email of the staff. For the example, I just put in my email. You can name it however you want. I just said new reservation at and then grab the reservation time so that for the output, I get something like new reservation at 11 a.m. Set the email type to HTML and for the message, drag and drop the HTML. Also make sure to turn off append and a 10 attribution. And that's it. Now you will have a fully working restaurant AI voice agent. So hopefully you guys learned something from this video. And if you did subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Also, you can find and download the exact workflow in the free school community. Have a great rest of the day and see you in the next one.